What is rosé? There's actually three different ways to make rosé. Maceration, saigné, or blending. Maceration is the most common, so let's start there. This can also be called skin contact, limited maceration, or intentional rosé. And to be rosé are usually picked earlier than red grapes destined to be red wine. Pick me, pick so you can retain higher acidity and brighter fruit flavors. The first thing to know is that all grape juice is clear, even if the grape is red. But rosé wine using 100% red grapes, but how? As you probably know, the juice of a berry, the inside of it, what we call the pulp, is white. No red color in it. Even in a red grape, you can see. simply split a grape berry, you will see that the inside of it is white. Yes. In the maceration method, step one is taking the red grapes, destemming them, and pressing them. At this point, the juice is allowed to sit and macerate with the skins of the red grapes for anywhere from 2 to 48 hours, depending how dark and how much extraction we want from the skins. The longer they sit, the deeper the color. Keep in mind, red wines are also made using this exact same process, but the maceration lasts weeks or months instead of just hours. But with rosé, after a few hours of maceration are up, the juice is removed from the skins, the skins get discarded. Now we have a pink wine. Well, sure, some sweet rosés do exist. Almost all rosé wine is made dry to bone dry. A few exceptions include pink wines produced in bulk, like pink Moscato and white Zinfandel. Pink, yes, but not a true rosé. There are also two other methods, less common but still worth talking about. Signé, or the bleeding method, started as a way not to make rosés, but instead concentrate red wines. Winemakers bleed off some of the juice of a red wine at the start of the maceration. You end up with a higher skin-to-juice ratio and a more concentrated red wine. The last method is blending finished red wine and white wine together. Rule. In most European places, it's actually illegal to make a rosé wine by blending red and white wine, except for one very famous example, champagne. And the only reason this is allowed in champagne? This method better preserves the bubbles, keeping them fresh. In Europe, it is forbidden by law to use this plus this to create that. Blending those two together in Europe is not going to be big no-no. With one notable exception, and that's rosé champagne, which, as you know, is usually very commonly made blending Chardonnay with Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. But that's a different type of rosé. It's a sparkling rosé, not a rosé per se.